Hey guys, check it out, I got my own talk show. Pretty cool, right? Now you may be wondering, where did a crazy person like me get a talk show? Well, let's just say I know a guy. Now, we're about to be on the air, and I think we already have our first caller. You're on the air. Your pecs are overly rounded. He seems lovely. Video games and failure go together like prison and convicted felons. You can't have one without the other. For the amount of money games make, it's ridiculous what is considered a failure. I mean, the Wii U is considered a failure and it sold how much? I didn't even know that many people existed. Now there's been failures upon failures upon failures, but let's start with the earliest example of a failed video game. Now when I think of early gaming failures, I think of E.T. for the Atari 2600. Now I've heard many bad things about this game, but I've never actually played it on my own, so let's see if it's actually as bad as they say. Well, at least it's better than Applejack's. I only played this game for about five minutes, and I can tell you without a doubt, this is one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. See, you'd think the arrows here at the top of the screen are there to guide you. But no, I don't have a clue what those do. They're just pointing in random directions. And then all of a sudden, I'm trapped in a pit. And sometimes I could get out, others I was just stuck. And if that's not bad enough, every part of the map looks exactly the same. Like, spot the difference. Can't find it? That's because they probably use the exact same map twice for some reason. Yeah, for some reason, the creators of this game were convinced it was going to sell well. And uh, 1.5 million isn't that bad if you're trying to go bankrupt. Yikes, now that was one bad video game, but we're just scratching the surface of these terrible games. There's plenty more where that came from. Hello? Get off the air! Your f***ing show is terrible, f*** it. You know, I'm starting to think you guys don't like me. Now, we could all point out the obvious failures a mile away, but what about the not-so-obvious ones? Well, Conker's Bad Fur Day is one of those games I grew up with, and playing it now? Well, here's my reaction. Oh, thank goodness I'm not an alcoholic squirrel. The game has some really good high points, but sadly, it's mostly just a game about an alcoholic squirrel whose wife got kidnapped. This is one of the strangest games I have ever encountered in my life. This is made by the same company who made Banjo-Kazooie, and you think it would be similar, and at a glance it is. But this is a lot more made for adults. There's a lot of vulgar language and alcohol and drug use and things like that. If I'm being honest, the reason this game probably didn't do so well is because it's rated M for Mature, so people's parents probably looked at it and decided, yeah, that's not for my kids. I mean, games like Banjo-Kazooie and Ukulele appeal to kids and adults, and mascot platformers are primarily a kid's genre. So when you take away the kid's aspect and make it for adults only, you get... Oh my god. Yeah, 55,000 sales is absolutely disgusting. To put that into perspective, that's not even half of the people that live in Wyoming, which is one of the lowest populated states in the U.S. I feel like this game would have been perfect for teenagers, but it had to get the mature rating, meaning you had to be 18 to buy this game. Or you could just get it on Rare Replay like I did. Yeah, if you just buy Rare Replay nowadays online, they won't ID you. You can just buy rated M games all you want. But most people probably won't get carded when buying video games, because normally game stores don't care. Unless you're old Mr. Stickler for the rules that works at my game store. But either way, being carded or not, this game is a fun platformer. But the jokes in the game are extremely corny, and the stuff that isn't corny... I am the great mighty poo, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. It's just dumb. You'd be better off playing Banjo-Kazooie if you're into these types of games. Now, before we get to our next segment, a word from our sponsor, Megaphone Inc. Incorporated. Now, they sent me a megaphone and they want me to use it. Can you believe that? Now, there's only one thing to do when somebody wants you to use a megaphone, so let's just turn it on and... Ah! Pretty cool, right? How much longer till the shit is over? Only seven more hours. Sometimes game companies just can't help themselves and decide to make pointless video games that are, well, pointless. There exists a remake of Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, and did you know this existed? Because I sure didn't. Now, this is a remake of one of my favorite RPGs, and a remake that never should have been made in the first place. You can already play the original version on the 3DS, and on top of that, because the remake uses the 3D features of the 3DS, 
The original runs at a higher frame rate. Man, I wish I was as pointless as this game. I'm not usually one to complain about frame rates, but in this game, it heavily impacts gameplay. When you're trying to time your attacks, in the original, it was kind of just second nature. But in this one, no. It just makes it impossible to time your attacks, and it's so annoying. And the art style is just so ugly compared to the original game. Now, the original had such an iconic art style with black borders around the characters, and it was just so pleasing to look at. And the remake? Ew! Yeah, this game looks disgusting to me. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but I hate how this game looks. Now, one of the good things about this game is they added a speed up cutscene button. Oh, hot dog! I knew this game was good. Now, knowing that, now how could this game have possibly failed? Oh, that's why. Yeah, this game got released after the damn Nintendo Switch, so who did they think was gonna buy this? It only sold around 34,000 copies, making it the worst selling Mario game ever. And the worst part, the company who made this game went bankrupt shortly after. Which is kind of a shame because the rest of the games in this series were some of my favorite Mario RPGs ever. But no, they had to make the remake and go and ruin it all for everyone. Now, there is a new one of these games on the way, and from what I've seen, Nintendo's making it entirely, so that gives me hope. But this game is going down as the second worst Mario game that I have ever played. With all the money I've been making on this talk show, I decided that we're going to give away something to the next person that calls in. So when you call in, you have your choice between one of three items. An Xbox. A Steam Deck. Or a pack of gum. This one's a personal favorite of mine. Congratulations, sir. You just won yourself a free pack of gum. Ugly ain't gonna make no future, bro. Nothing ain't gonna happen, bro. These are getting vulgar. Now, a little backstory before this next one. Did you know there was a 3D game that was supposed to be in development and come out before Mario 64 did? I mean, they didn't quite make it. But it's the thought that counts. Bubsy 3D, if I'm putting it bluntly, didn't stand the slightest chance of being a good game. I mean, just look at this gameplay. I've been to funerals I enjoyed more than this game. This is a PS1 game, which means get rid of these and add a whole bunch of disappointment. If you didn't know, a lot of PS1 games don't have analog stick support because, well, have you seen a PS1 controller? Ah! A 3D game that uses a D-pad to move around sounds awfully like another game with terrible controls. Now, as far as I can tell, with this game, you're trying to collect rockets and little sparky things, and, but I don't really have a clue, because as far as I played the game, it had no sound. Now, I don't know if that was just an issue, because I played this game on an emulator or what, but there was just nothing. No background music, no sound for taking damage, no pickup sound, just dead silence the whole way through, and it was extremely eerie. It doesn't help that this game is extremely creepy looking, looking like a horror ARG. But I guess if this game would have genuinely came out on time, it might have been monumental. Or people would still hate it, because what is going on? When you jump in this game, the camera for some reason just moves around you and hovers over you, and it makes it super hard to platform in this game because of it. I mean, you can line up a jump, think you're gonna make it, and no, you fall because the camera is terrible and so are the controls. And the sad thing is... This game outsold Bowser's Inside Story Remake by a lot, with 190,000 sales. Now, how did that happen? So, does anybody here like the Wii? Hey, I actually really love your podcast. Oh, really? No. I'm getting tired of you people. Now, everyone get ready, because I'm about to show you the worst game of the year, and quite possibly the decade. Concord. Why, you may be asking? Well, it's because the game was so bad that the server shut down and it didn't even last a full month. Now, this game was developed by Sony, so you think it would at least have people buying it just because it's made by a huge company like that. But no! It only sold 25,000 copies, which as far as I know is one of the worst selling games of all time. And it didn't help that the game doesn't even look remotely interesting. I mean, have you seen the trailer? And this game was in development for 10 years. Not being able to play this game myself, I can't really talk about the gameplay, but I'm sure that was awful too, because I've never heard a good thing about this game. Well, that's gonna go and conclude the one and only talk show that I'm ever gonna be on. Now you see, it was a wild ride. Had tons of call-ins, my Wii blew up, nobody paid me. But I had a really fun time, so I don't think any of that really matters. Is this the Krusty Krab? 
Okay, now you guys are just messing with me.